What up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of our Two Lost Conversations, where we're talking with some of the dopest artists on the platform. I'm sure there's a lot of dope artists on, on the platform, but but some of these conversations I think are crucial because they're having success and we want to figure out how it's happening because it's ridiculously hard to be an independent artist these days. So we wanted to tap some folks and, and figure out like how, how, how are you getting traction? How are you finding success? And, and where are some of the, the roadblocks that maybe we might be able to help you overcome? Um, and today we're blessed to have another very talented artist, Eric Reprid. Did I, did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's perfect. Okay, go. Reprid, Reprid, but no, Reprid is exactly it. There you go. Uh, there you go. Cool. So he's out of Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver is probably one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Uh, but give us a little background on, on your story, man. Obviously from Vancouver, but but when did you start this musical journey? Um, I started making music when I was around seventeen, uh, yep. and it was it was like towards the end of high school, like when I was like playing around with it, and then um, when I left high school. Uh, or when I graduated high school, uh, I went to university and then I kind of stopped doing that two months in, um, around when I was like 18, when I turned, when I just turned 18. So, so, so only two months, so only two months of college and you were like, nah, this is not for me. Yeah. no. no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that, so you started taking some music, started jumping into music from there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just, I literally just did it every single day for, I don't even know probably six years now yeah okay yeah when I was 17 i couldn't even stay on beat though i remember i made like one song and i told my mom i was leaving school she was like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what was that what was that conversation like when your mom you know, because moms was probably like you're tripping yeah no it's my my parents were like completely shocked they're like what are you talking about because like my mom says she's like tone deaf my dad has never like her and my dad have never really played music in the house nothing like that mm -hmm. so like I would always make like YouTube videos as a kid. So like, and I never really like displayed any interest towards music. And then until I was like 17, I randomly tell her like, oh, I'm, I'm like dropping out to do music. She's like, what do you, what do you mean? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just kind of added the pieces up in my head. I was like, you know, music makes sense. Even though I like, I didn't know how to stay on beat. And I, <laughs> you know, yeah. So it was like a quick, it wasn't even like, oh, okay, you've been working on music, working on music. No, and good. then it, it was super quick. It was so yeah. I could see. I could see why your parents were probably like, "Yo, what? Yeah, what's what's going on?" So okay. So you, so you start. What, was there any kind of structure to what you were doing in the beginning? Were you just like making music, putting it out? Was it like a once a week thing? Or how how what was yeah. the strategy? I mean, yeah, was, that was around the time when Ross kind of took off, which was like twenty sixteen. So of course it was like. It was inspired by that, um, like the song a week thing. Um, but I was just like, I didn't know what I was doing. So I, I didn't even know he had like songs to fall back on. And like, I was like, like I came from making one song, you know what I mean? So I like made one song and I was like, okay, from now on I'm dropping one song a week. So I was like, I barely even knew how to make a song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then, so it just, I kind of like overworked myself in the beginning. Um, Cause like me and my homie, we both dropped out. So my homie produced. Um, and I would always go to her, his house like every single day and we, we, uh, we, we wanted to do this music thing together. And, uh, so like we, we started to make a song a week. So like, for example, like Sunday, we would start the song, maybe hit like some writer's block or whatever, just like have no idea what the fuck's going on, you know, cause I'm still learning how to even make a song, structure a song yeah. and like by like Friday, hopefully we'll get it all recorded. And then um, I have to make the cover art and then we have to do the uh, make, you know, the, the social posts and everything like that. And then hopefully by uh, Saturday we can drop it. Um, and yeah, like, so it, it was just like a, uh, it was just this, it was like running on a treadmill, but like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how to run yet. You know what I mean? So I was just like slowly kind of like falling back and uh yeah, it got to a point where it was like it was like release day and we had to make a song that day because we had nothing the whole week um, mm -hmm. just because we couldn't come up with it. So, yeah, that that didn't work out too well uh, after that. <laughs> so we kind of took a break. Um, and yeah, how were how were you how, were you just living at home? How were you like paying your bills or were you just at the at home with the fam? 
Yeah, so that's why I was like so adamant on dropping out when I was young because I knew my age. I was like, you know, like if I'm going to do anything with my life, I have to do it now because um, mm. I can capitalize on my age, right? Like, so uh, so that's that's why. Uh, so yeah, I was just like living home, living at home and and, and yeah. So I mean, me and my mom had like a two year thing. Um, so it was like, I we, we had a deal that like in two years, I would make as much money as she did off music um or else i'd go back to school mm-hmm. um and originally she was like she was no no, no just make like two thousand dollars a month off music like it's fine like she's a nurse so she gets she gets like decent pay so um but i was like it was like mid fight and i was like i had like my ego I was just young and stupid so i was like I was like no i'm gonna make as, as much as you like 2k is like too little or whatever I was, and then <laughs> um and then yeah, so so that's why uh, I was a, like she she kind of allowed me to stay at her house while I while I was out of school, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when when did you start getting a little tra- when did you start getting a little traction? What song was it? And and was there anything different that you did for that particular song, or did it just kind of like get traction on its own? Um, the the biggest the biggest moment I'd say is twenty twenty Cold World. Uh, when I dropped the song Cold World, um, that one uh, came out of kind of like, kind of like a crunch time moment, like a desperation kind of moment. Because like I told you just just now, like about the deal. So that was like, uh, that was like three years after the deal and made that deal in like 2017 with my mom. And mm-hmm. like, um, I, of course, I didn't hit the deal. I didn't, I didn't achieve it. So I had to go back to school. So in 2020, I was like going back to school and like uh, I was doing online school and I was like, fuck, I'm never doing this shit ever again. So I was like, so I literally um, and, and this is around the time COVID happened and everybody was like, oh, like TikTok was just starting to pop off. So I was like, oh, like, like maybe I should look into this because um, like a couple of my homies like that went in my high school. It's it's so fun. It's so weird. Like two of uh two of my really good homies are like YouTubers, like, Mm -hmm. like pretty, pretty popping YouTubers. They all have like over a mil subs, like multiple channels, like over a mil subs, like from my high school and shit. Um, and they were all like, yo, like get on, get on TikTok and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, like I'll, I'll look into it. So I got on TikTok and like literally for that summer, like I just kind of studied the app and I was like, okay, what, what formats work? Like what, what's, what's happening? And like, yeah, we we just came up with like kind of a, a content strategy and 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 um yeah, and the song the song did good. The song the song went so, good. So what what were some of like the components of that strategy that you feel like really really worked? Um what, what what do you mean by that? Like was it the cadence? Was it like the was it specific type of post? Was it the amount of posts? Like yeah. what, what, and I know TikTok has changed quite a bit. I mean, all these social media platforms evolved, but at the time, like what was working on TikTok? What type of content? Um, I mean, story, the, the storytelling one was, was big. Like I, I, uh, looking back, like I, I don't regret it, but like in the time, in the moment, like people see the numbers, people see like the, Oh, like it's, it's working. It's this is that like in the moment. Yeah, sure. I was like kind of excited. It was working, but making those TikToks was like costing my soul. You know what I mean? Cause I was like, mm. I was like cringing at myself, like while I was doing it, but I was like, I, I literally had no choice. Cause I was like, I need to make something happen this year and like fast, you know what I mean? Cause I can't, I can't afford to like keep doing this. So it was, it was mainly like the storytelling thing. Um, storytelling TikToks. I'm not sure if you've seen like the, I really messed up. I really whatever mm-hmm. um, type of TikToks. Like at the time, it was like I've only seen one uh, before, and like um, what else was there? There was uh, there was a whole bunch of other like mini TikToks or whatever. Like the we just we just made a list. We were just like okay, and then like on the release day of the song, we just like drop, drop, drop. So it is quantity plus the uh, plus the type of TikToks. Um, but yeah, it was just uh, yeah. But I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> it costs a lot of my mental health. So, damn. So, what is it about this generation and this and this? I mean, it, it may just be the space where a lot of young people are in terms of like really depressing, self medicating, 
you know, I'm not saying it's specific. I mean, obviously cold world is in that, in that land. I don't know the specifics of the, of the lyrics, but just in general, like a lot of those songs do really well and resonate with today's young folks. And I know artists that are not even in that space anymore, but keep creating those songs because they know that that's, that's what's working. Like, what is it, you know, what's your perspective on that? I think a lot of people are just sad, man. Like, I feel like social media is, can I, sw- I can swear, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, social media is fuck, bro. Like, um, I, so like, I just finished my project uh, that I'm about to drop. And like, I was kind of like, I was kind of uh, gone from like social media for a minute. And like, kind of like last year, a lot of shit went on. So I was just kind of off my phone for like the whole year. And like, now that I'm like coming back into it, coming back, like looking into like social media and like thinking of like promo and stuff like that. Like I, I see myself like unconsciously, like, like fiending, you know what I mean? Just to Mm -hmm. like, just open Instagram, let's open this, let's open that, like whatever. It's just like, but like, if you think about it, it's like, it's just, it's too much stimulus. Like you can't process it. You know what I mean? At the same time. And it's like, you're always seeing, you're not like, a human mind isn't like programmed to see like a thousand different people. You know what I mean? Like imagine you had a tribe, right? Like if you had a tribe of like 10 people or not 10 people, like maybe 50 people, you know, it's very easy to like comprehend. But like, if you, if you, if you keep on seeing like this person's like life and that, that person's life, this person's life, whatever, this famous person, that famous person, it's just like, and then you, you unconsciously everyone compares. So then you'll just like keep comparing. You'll keep like, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's natural to just like feel like crap, you know? Yeah. So I, I mean, I definitely can understand that. And I also, what I find, you know, probably what I find interesting or not even interesting is, is negative. Like just to see, like, say you're scrolling your timeline, the range of emotions that you go through in a span of like scrolling for 30 seconds has to have a pretty damaging effect or a numbing effect on on us right because i can scroll and i because i follow you know political stuff i like to stay involved what's going on you might see like there might be an earthquake and then you might see a a a police shooting and then you might see something happy and then you might see a fight and then like it's just the range of emotions like in a span of 30 seconds scrolling that's got to have a negative effect on um you know on a, or just a numbing effect like it's just you know it's just become so natural to see so many negative things that we get numb to it all and we shouldn't be that way so i i get it um so yeah, i think I it makes i sorry I, I i literally just saw a post last night um <laughs> it's funny i saw a post on social media about social media but like i saw a post saying like um like in 30 like just like what you said like in 30 seconds like you can you can literally scroll through um like 50 things whatever right and just keep getting the, like these dopamine hits and then your real life will just seem kind of boring because you just keep like your phone just keeps feeding you dopamine so your level is just like up here but then like in real life there's no stimulus like that so you just get bored or sad or whatever i don't know you know mm. so so you so you took a break for quite some time like coming back to it like knowing what you know now like how are you kind of preparing yourself just mentally or maybe baking it into your day in terms of kind of like how to just stay more even keel so that things don't affect you as much so you, that maybe you don't have to take like these long periods of break. Cause sometimes as an independent artist, you know, when you take long breaks, it's tough, you know, it's, it's tough to come back and, and to, to jump into that same momentum. Um, you know, so how are you preparing yourself for this, this run of music? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I just been, just a lot more conscious because I'm first of all like I had to accept like that I had a problem of like the dopamine shit because I feel Mm. like that whole cold world like from 2020 up until maybe like beginning like middle of last year maybe even beginning of this year I don't even know but like um like up until from from 2020 that point where I when I was like constantly on TikTok kind of like learning the app and like um just like learning about social media and like marketing and shit like that. Like it, I feel like unconsciously, like I kind of developed a, a, a dopamine kind of thing. And, and especially posting, it's just like, it got to a point where I was just like, you, you keep like you, 
because I had to make something happen, right? It's just kind of like weird. Like I didn't, I wasn't conscious of what was happening. So I, I kind of had to make something happen. So I was constantly looking for the TikToks that were going to like explode, explode, explode. Like that was the only thing on my mind because I was like, I need to make this happen this year. And like, um, so like from that, like, I feel like my mind just kind of like got like hooked on that. Like, let's go, let's go, like explode, whatever, like that big dopamine hit, right? So so from from then i just i feel like i developed like kind of like a uh like a dopamine addiction um yeah. uh, and like and like unconsciously like i didn't even know so like how I, how it really started to change was like when i when i first it like accepted it and i was like okay like i feel like i have a a problem like with like my scroll like my screen time all this shit like, you know what i mean um and uh and yeah, so so from that point on, like now I'm I'm able to be more conscious of it. I'm like, okay, this is bad. You know what I mean? So first thing is like in my head, it's like, okay, social media is not good for me. So like once you can accept that, then okay, start to create the distance. And like I'll I'll like work out. Um, I'll I just do shit that I don't want to do. Like because I feel like my brain, like your brain is like a horse. You know what I mean? Like if you just keep letting it do whatever it wants to do, you're just gonna you know go everywhere. So it's like I hate working out. So I'll just like force myself to work out um i feel like that really helps that really helped a lot and um yeah just like yeah 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 so i I mean i think you know you know for other people that are that may listen to this you know it maybe it's working out maybe it's meditation maybe it's a, a balanced diet um you know, maybe it's a combination of all these things, but I think yeah. it is important i think it's important that you were able to kind of realize it yourself and kind of you know give yourself a timeout. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so this year what's in, and I know you got a release coming soon. And by the time people see this, the, the release will be out. What's the, what's the name of the song that you're dropping? I think in a couple of days, uh, the song is called evil. Uh, it's part of my next project, uh, called Riddy's revenge. Uh, it's, it's kind of like, a, it's like an album, but we're dropping it all as like singles. So it'll be <laughs> like a song we type thing for like nine months um or sorry nine months nine weeks oh, but damn that's a um, that's a long album <laughs> yeah yeah so it's a nine song okay and, uh, it depends when this is out but like we're uh yeah we're gonna package it up into like a uh a uh actual album on spotify like after mm-hmm. so you know it's like all singles and then after we're just gonna package it up into yep. an album along with like a couple new songs um and yeah yeah dope and then what's kind of like the vibe is, is it kind of in line with the, the music that you've been dropping? Have you done anything different with this one? What's the, what's the vibe of the music? I don't, I don't even know. I like, I don't know what the vibe is, but really with this one, I just wanted to, to like start to form like my own kind of sound. I feel like a lot of like, I look back at like my old stuff and it's just like, it's not what I wanted to make. I, I almost quit music last year um, just because I was going through some shit, like thinking about like what I really want in life. And also I was just like unsatisfied with like the type of music I was making. Mm. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't what I really wanted to make. So, um, but yeah, like I was, I was so, like, I literally there was a day where I was like, I'm done making music, whatever. But, um, but yeah, it didn't last very long. Like 20 minutes later, I heard like a 808 and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can give this up. But like <laughs> when I heard the 808, but that's when I realized though, because I was like, oh, 808s, whatever. Like, so then I really decided to focus on like 808s because I was like, because um, I feel like that's what I was like unhappy with, especially in today's music. I feel like 808s are so like, it's just, it's just the same 808s. It's the same drum patterns. It's the same things I've heard like for fucking like 24 years, you know? So yeah so like with this one i really focused on like the 808s and like just making and just doing kind of different things in the songs to kind of like yeah stuff that i would want to hear you know dope dope nah it's cool man so and then in in terms of um you know obviously you've released some stuff through two laws when did you start using two laws how long had you been using us as a as a a distribution company Mm, i think i think i've been with two laws for like a year year or something maybe okay is there is there anything in particular that you like about the platform or is there anything that we could do better is there is there a service or tool that you wish you had 
um, you know, via the two loss uh, platform? Um, no, the website is super clean. That's why I really like two loss. The website is super clean. The people are super dope. Um, yeah, we, we always get great support and everything like that. So, um, like I'm, I'm super happy with two loss. Uh, there's, there's nothing really that I could think of on the moment that I was like, that I would kind of need additionally, but, um, I have heard like a couple of my friends, uh, that have also used two loss say like they ran into a couple like distribution issues, but like just on the back end, but I, mm -hmm. I've never run into anything. Um, mm -hmm. so I can't really say. Yeah. I mean, I think so much music's being distributed these days that of course, you know, nobody's going to have a hundred percent issue free platform. So hopefully we address it as, as, as quick as we can. Uh, yeah. you, I know you kept saying we, and as an independent artist, like a team is crucial. Like who is, who is the team? And uh, right like, now, who Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was, I was finished. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right now it's just me and my manager, uh, Josh. Okay. It was before it was like, uh, me, Josh and Mark, like Mark was my, uh, producer, but, uh, last year, uh, we, we kind of parted ways creatively. He wanted to do his own stuff and then. Yeah, so I just kept doing my stuff. But yeah, yeah I, especially as you evolve your sound. I mean, I think it's dope, uh, you know, to lock in with a producer. And if and if you yeah. and the producer grow together creatively in the same direction, mm -hmm. then that's great. But, you know, if you want to – everybody on the team – this is why I tell in, independent artists, like, you're going to need a team, but, like, everybody – has to grow and evolve and everybody's kind of responsible for their, their own career. So hopefully it was amicable. Um, and hopefully it was just like, Hey, you know, I want to, I want to do country now and you want to go this way. Like that's, that's a cool, you know, we still, yeah. you know, still cool. Um, dope, man. So do you have any expert, obviously, you know, the, 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 the project that cold world was on did amazing. I think cold world was like over 50 million streams on Spotify alone. Um, you know, do you, do you have any expectations? Are you just releasing it with like, Hey, this is what it is or how, how do you, or do you have any goals for it? Um, how do you look at stuff like that? Uh, sorry, you, you kind of cut off for like a split second. Oh, my bad. So for, with the music that you're releasing, given the, given you've had so much success with the music that you've put out prior, do you feel any pressure? Are you putting that pressure on yourself to like, match or exceed you know the results that you've had with prior releases or are you comfortable just putting it out and letting it you know let it letting it resonate with the fans that it resonates with yeah i mean i i feel like i'm i'm at a point where i'm just like super comfortable with whatever um like i said before like i i recognize that i had kind of a dopamine addiction and i feel like that spreads along in every aspect of your life uh, so mm -hmm. from the, you know, social media to whatever, to the, the, the numbers on your songs and like how songs do, they're all like sources of that. So like, like that, that led me to like, um, like the, the dopamine addiction, like took me to a place where I was just like, to a point where I was just like, I, I just don't want to do music anymore. Cause I, I, I would always have to use social media. And I was like, you know, like, I don't want to use social media. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to use it the way I'm using it. I don't want to do this anymore. Like if I have to keep using like, for example, like TikTok or like whatever this, this platform to keep doing music, like I just, I'm, I'd rather just quit. So like I, so now like how I approach it is like, I'm not like, I don't, I don't want to post on TikTok no more. I'm not posting on TikTok. I don't care about numbers. I don't care about any of that shit. Like I'm literally focused on the music and, and that's it. Like if it, like, yeah, if it goes, it goes. If it if it doesn't go, it's it's fine. I to me, it's like, have you seen Peaky Blinders? I haven't, but I've heard great things about the show. That's on. It's on Netflix. Is it on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you should you should definitely watch it. It's, oh, it's my favorite show of all time. It's so good, bro. It's like from beginning, it's good, and then the ending is good. It's super rare though to find a show like that where the so I have to check it out. Yeah. Um, but anyways, long story short, like the, it's, a uh, it's about like three brothers that came back from war and like, um, they just start up this gang called like the Peaky Blinders and they, they like, they live every day just kind of like however they want. Cause like, they feel like they already died in like the war or whatever. So it was like, um, uh, my point with that is just like, because I already like got to a point where I was like, I'm just like completely done with this. I, I already feel like I'm like 
kind of like quote unquote died. That might be cringe, whatever, mm. but like I quote unquote died in a sense. So like now it's like any day that I make music is just like because I want to, not because like I feel like I have to anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. No, nah, it, it it makes sense. And I it makes sense. And I do plan on watching that show. So hopefully the the analogy I'm sure it will make sense when I when I watch the show. Well, well, cool, man. Well, well, congrats on on your success thus far. Being an independent artist is not easy these days. I mean, you're you're competing with so much content that's out there. Um, but I think congrats even more so just on you know you being able to identify that there was something going on and 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 being able to kind of like manage it on your own. I don't know if there was like a third party therapist or anybody else that you kind of relied on, but um. You know, I think that conversation is crucial uh, to have with a lot of young people these days because social right. media for it is, is as much of a blessing as it is in one regard. It definitely comes with its, you know, negative side effects as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, the only way to change, I feel like definitely is if you if you want to and you recognize it. But yeah. Yeah, no, I, so, I agree. I appreciate, cool. I, appreciate you, I appreciate you bringing me on today, man. Nah, for sure. Is there anything else that you want folks to know? Any message? Any any advice that you have for an an aspiring artist that you feel like we haven't touched on today? Anything else? Um. Um. Get off social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tough because, like, you we have to use like we have to use social media. Like, because if if TikTok didn't exist, I wouldn't be having this conversation right now, right? Like, you wouldn't have had the success. So it's 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 so tough because you have to use. So I don't know an artist that has done it any other way that wasn't already established, right? right, right um. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's so it's tough to just be like, hey, because I know most artists I know don't want to use social media that like they, you know, they're not huge fans of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's free. You know what I'm saying? It's free. It's it's a way to, to get your 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 brand out to the masses. So yeah. um, it's a necessary evil, should we say? Yeah. Yeah. Fair. So. And yeah, use a caution, I guess. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, man, it was it was a great conversation, man. I'm glad we touched on some of these things because I feel like it's it's important to to discuss. Um, what date is the first song? What give us the date so no matter when this comes out, people will know. April eighth is the first song. And then April eighth, and then every week. Yeah. And then every week for nine weeks. Um, yeah. yeah. Dope. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you spending time with us. This has been another episode of Two Lost Conversations. We will see y'all next time. Peace.